Yo, what's up? First things first, you gotta clean it out back here. It's not gonna look perfect, but whatever you leave under the floor is permanently gonna be under there unless you plan on taking your floor back up and cleaning it. Also, it's probably a good idea to fill in any holes in the floor. What you'll need is some body filler, some hardener for that body filler, some cardboard, and something to mix it with. And if you have huge holes like me, then you might need some fiberglass mesh, but you could be okay with just the body filler. Just going around it with a screwdriver or a knife. So what you're gonna do is put some of this onto your cardboard. Then you're gonna bring out your hardener. Squirt a little bit of this onto your body filler and what it's gonna do is it's gonna start the hardening process. Mix it in and then apply it to your hole. And then in a few minutes, that's gonna be completely hard just like the metal of the floor. So you wanna mix it real good until it's pink like this and then you gotta move quickly because if you don't, then it's gonna harden right there on the cardboard. And just like that, the first hole is covered up. So this is what I do for these big holes that are a pain in the ass. Basically what you wanna do is cover this entire space with something and then put body filler on top of that. And I'm using this fiberglass mesh right here. If you're using fiberglass mesh, make sure you put on some gloves like I did, unless you just wanna be itching for a month. And this step is really important because you don't want to have moisture, bugs, and dirt, and mold and stuff growing up under your floor because while you're driving, your tires can kick all that stuff up right into these holes in the back of this van. In fact, I don't know why they manufactured this van and decided to do that without filling them in with silicone or something, but a lot of these old vans are like that. So if you're working in an old van like me, then make sure you fill in the holes, it only takes a few minutes. Now for the actual floor, this is what you're gonna need. Floor underlayment, your vinyl flooring, a jigsaw or a handsaw if that's all you have, a marker or a pen to make marks for all of your cuts. The reason why I choose to use this specific type of vinyl flooring is because it replaces the need to lay down plywood or something hard to kind of level your floor before you put on like all, any of that stick on stuff or linoleum. Next step is to insulate your floor, use an underlayment, and also waterproof your floor. Luckily, we don't need to use three different things for that. I actually have one product that does all of that stuff, provides a little bit of insulation, prevents moisture underneath your floor, and it also gives the floor itself something to grip on instead of just this bare sheet metal that's on the ground. So I'm just gonna roll this underlayment out like this, and then I'm gonna cut around every uh, weird space in the van. So once your floor is all covered like mine, then we can finally start with the wood. So these boards are put together with tongue and groove. And basically what that means, when they come together, these two snap in together and form a solid floor. So I'm gonna do the first one to show you before we speed it up again. What you're gonna do is lay down your first piece towards the front of the van all the way on the left side. Make sure this piece is as straight as you can get it with the back because this is the guiding piece that's going to dictate how the rest of your floor is going to look. Your second piece is going to connect with the first piece from the side and not from the front. And make sure that for all of these, the tongue piece, the part you see sticking out, is facing towards the back of the van. Once your second piece is on, you're going to take your marker and mark where it ends. And then you're going to take your saw and cut from that line all the way across. So now what you're gonna do is take that piece you just cut and put it into place in the first row. Now that that one's there, you're gonna take the other piece. This is still the same piece as that that I cut. It's just shorter now. And then this is gonna be the starter for the next row. So now that that one is in and this one is in, you're going to grab a fresh new piece and then that's going to go here. And then you're going to repeat the same exact process with the new piece by marking it right here. And that's it. Then you just keep cutting this one. That becomes the starter. Put a fresh one. Cutting that one. That'll be the starter. Put a fresh one. And then that's how you go all the way back and you don't have just the same pattern repeating all over and over again. And eventually all these pieces are gonna connect together to hold each other together. So now I'm gonna speed this up and I'm gonna finish the job.
project took about two hours total. I spent an hour last night, then it got too dark to film. So I came back the next day and did the second hour. And I only used two boxes, cost me $20 per box, probably one of the cheapest methods. And I think it looks the best as well. If you guys don't have a Home Depot or a Lowe's in your area, I've included a link to Amazon and that'll be in the description. If you want a full guide on how I go about converting all of my vans, then you can check out my ebook that's on my website, also link in the description. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Hopefully I helped you guys out and uh, see you next time later.